In a world with war, poverty, and political strife, it's time for some good news. In this video, I'll show you unequivocal scientific evidence that multiple sclerosis is becoming significantly milder, at least on average with a lot of individual variation. People with the disease are living longer with less disability and having fewer relapses, citations below, and we'll talk about why this might be happening. Remember what Steven Pinker said, life has become better and no one seems to know about it. Some of the studies I'm going to show you refer to this disability scale called EDSS or Expanded Disability Status Scale used in MS research. It's a 0 to 10 scale, 0 being no disability, higher numbers reflecting greater amounts of disability, 2 to 3 could be considered mild disability, 4 would be moderate disability, and at DSS 6 a cane is needed to walk longer distances of 100 meters or greater. First, we'll look at how severe MS used to be in the past by reviewing older studies. We'll start with a 1983 Queen Square study. This is a cross-sectional study in Great Britain, just looking at people in 1983 with MS and how disabled they were at that point in time, and they're using the EDSS scale. They looked at how severe their disability was, mild, moderate, or severe, and severe meant a DSS of six or worse, meaning at least they needed a cane to walk longer distances or they had more disability and the duration of the disease how long they had MS so one to five you're looking at people who are relatively newly diagnosed all the way to having the disease for greater than 25 years now at the very bottom they're accounting for people who passed away with multiple sclerosis so this is sort of the most accurate number for people who had this level of disability needing a cane or worse you can see people earlier in the disease who had it for six to ten years years, 28% needed a cane or were worse off, whereas after 25 years, most people, 66%, needed a cane or were even worse. So it was a pretty serious disease if you had it for a prolonged period of time. We can go back even further. This is a review from 1973 prior to the EDSS being widely used. They looked at 241 people with MS, and after a median follow-up of 22 years, only 20% had had no restriction of employment or domestic life. Obviously, this is a little bit subjective. And even amongst those 20%, they still could have some symptoms. They weren't necessarily symptom-free. So the majority had significant impairment after 22 years. If we move forward in time, this is an observational study published 2011. And they looked at people with relapsing onset MS, which keep in mind, isn't everyone with MS. Some people have primary progressive MS where they have in insidious worsening at the time of diagnosis. However, this is the majority of people with MS. They found that 10 years after onset, only 26.1% had reached DSS of 6, in other words, needing a cane to walk long distances. If you go back a few slides, this is the Queen Square study from 1983. If you sort of average these two columns, which is roughly 10 years, it averages out to around 31%. So there seems to be a slight decrease in the number needing a cane between between 1983 and 2011. But if we move forward only five years later to 2016, the publication of the MS EPIC study, the difference is enormous. Here, we're looking at a survival curve, time to EDSS 6, meaning time until people need a cane. It starts off with no one needing a cane, and then more and more people need a cane over time. After 10 years, only 4.7% needed a cane, and even by 20 years, only 6 16.2%. Now, this is done at the University of California, San Francisco. It's a select center. Of course, their diagnosis of MS could be a little bit different. It's not exactly an apples to apples comparison. Again, we're looking only at relapsing onset MS, a little bit different from the Queen Square data, but still, these numbers can't be argued with. The decline in disability is just enormous. Another way to look at this would be the typical age at which someone with MS achieves achieves a certain level of disability. It turns out that absolute age, time since birth, is more strongly correlated with disability in people with MS than duration of disease because age of diagnosis is highly variable and there's evidence that the pathophysiology of the disease is starting long before clinical onset in many people with MS. This is a study done in three countries, Sweden, United Kingdom, and Canada, published in 2006, and they
they looked at three disability milestones, EDSS 4, which is moderate disability, and then 6 and 7. So for EDSS 4, the median age to achieve this level of disability was 44.3, meaning at this age, half people had EDSS 3, excuse me, 4 or higher, and half of people had EDSS 3.5 or below. For EDSS 6, needing a cane, it was 54.7 years. For EDSS 7, in other words, needing a wheelchair for all but shorter distances, it was 63.1 years. However, if we move forward only 10 years later, this is a similar study done from the Swedish MS Registry published 2016. They looked at these disability milestones, and for EDSS 4, the median age was now 60.7, and for EDSS 6, needing a cane, it was 64.3. You are reading that correctly. It's nearly 10 years later compared to the study I just showed you, and that publication was only 10 years earlier. Now, Sweden is different from the United Kingdom. Perhaps there's a different style of diagnosis of MS. Also, Sweden is known to use a lot of the highly effective disease-modifying therapy, rituximab, which could be driving some of these results, but the difference is is enormous. Here we're looking at just the single country Sweden and they're doing a comparison between 2010 and 1995 and the risk of people with MS having certain disability milestones, EDSS 3, 4, or 6. A relative risk of 1 would mean equal risk of having that level of disability in 2010 compared to 1995 and a number lower than 1 means a decreased risk in 2010. You can see all of the numbers are less than one, but in many cases, not much lower in the low to mid 90s. However, if you looked at people who were treated with medication earlier in the disease for the disability milestone of EDSS 6.0 needing a cane, there was a relative risk of 0.88, meaning a 12% reduced risk of needing a cane. Definitely something to note. Another thing to look at would be progressive MS. Most people start off with relapsing MS, meaning they have distinct attacks. But as they get older with the disease, they may start having a slow worsening of symptoms over time, which tends to be less reversible and more associated with long-term disability. This is a study from 1966 where they observed people over seven years on average, and they found 79% had progressive MS, a very high number. Compare that to the MS EPIC study I mentioned earlier. Here you're looking at a survival curve of transition to secondary progressive MS in people who started with relapsing MS. And even after 20 years, only 24.2% had transitions to progressive MS. Now the use of the term progression between neurologists now and then is probably a little bit different. And also this is transition from the point of clinical onset not during a seven-year observational period. So it's not a perfectly fair comparison, but clearly there's a reduction in progressive MS in modern times compared to the 1960s. Though I acknowledge milder forms of MS have always existed. This is from 1958, the British Medical Journal, the BMJ. They did a series of 586 people with MS at Middlesex Hospital, and 13% had no disability after 15 years. Another way to look at this would be to look at clinical trials over time. And I'm going to show you data from the placebo group of clinical trials. So these are people who entered a drug trial hoping to get randomized to take a new drug, but they actually ended up getting the placebo. Let's see how they did. Each data point here, the circles and the squares, is an individual randomized trial. The circles are relapsing MS trials. The squares are progressive MS trials. The bigger circles and squares mean there was a higher sample size and they color-coded the median age in the study. On the x-axis is the publication year, so towards the right is more modern trials, and we're looking at the annualized relapse rate. Relapses per person per year. If you had one relapse over two years, that would be 0.5, for instance, and you can see there's a dramatic reduction over time with a lot of individual trial variation of the average number of relapses. So people with MS getting placebo seem to be having less relapses. Now, of course, times were different back then. People didn't have as many options. Maybe they were more desperate to get into trials and they had higher disability, more aggressive MS. So there are other biases, but the trend is clear. 
people in clinical trials for MS are having less attacks even if they're on placebo. This is a similar graphic looking at disability progression. The y-axis is confirmed disability progression. What that means is someone has an appointment in the trial and they have worsened compared to their baseline disability. And it's not just random fluctuation because on a follow-up visit, their EDSS is still higher. So it's confirmed disability progression. And the average rate of progression seems to be going down in trials, MS, even in the placebo group seems to be associated with less progression of disability. So it's not just the medications that are driving this effect. Finally, we'll look at survival and life expectancy. This study looks at excess death rates based on the period of onset of multiple sclerosis from before 1950 all the way to 2015. Unfortunately, people with MS have slightly higher mortality rates and slightly lower life expectancy compared to the general population, mostly due to conditions conditions like blood clots and infections that can be complications of the disease. On the right, you see excess death rate, and there were excess deaths early on, but they've gone down over the time, and now they're fairly minimal compared to the general population. This is an older study looking at survival in people with MS. We have men on the left and women on the right, and the different lines are different periods of multiple sclerosis onset. These bottom two lines are from 1949 to 1968, and you can see fewer people survive compared to the top two lines from 1969 to 1988. So people with MS were living longer even prior to the availability of disease-modifying therapy. And so even if you don't buy each individual study, and I admit my analysis has methodological problems, including some issues I didn't bring up here, I think the overall trend is clear. People with MS are living longer with less disability and fewer relapses, kind of like the book Guns, Germs, and Steel, where each argument is questionable, but the overall conclusion seems solid. So why is this happening? Why is MS becoming milder? Well, there are different theories. One could be better diagnosis. In other words, people with MS aren't doing better. It's just that back in 1960, there were a lot of people with milder MS, and they just went undiagnosed, and now we diagnose them, and they end up having benign disease, bringing down the average EDSS of people who've had the disease for many years. For instance, let's say a woman comes into my office and she has numbness in the hand that resolves, her examination is normal, but based on her description of the symptoms, I order an MRI scan that then leads to a diagnosis of MS. Well, back in 1975, there were no MRI scans, so it would be very difficult to diagnose. Someone would have to have a more significant attack with clear objective findings in most cases. And of course, there was a lot of misdiagnosis back in the day as well. Also, the diagnostic criteria themselves have changed. The early McDonald diagnostic criteria for MS required that people have two multiple sclerosis attacks. Now people can be diagnosed after a single event. And at the time I'm filming this video, they may be changing the diagnostic criteria such that some people with no symptoms of MS based on MRI findings and other ancillary findings could be diagnosed with the disease. So we may be picking up people with milder cases, things we used to call clinically isolated syndrome or possible MS may just now have multiple sclerosis. And surely those people will tend to have a better prognosis because their presentation was less aggressive. The third could be lifestyle factors. Now, we think that lifestyle is getting worse. More people have obesity, type 2 diabetes, are more sedentary or eating more processed food, but there could be something about lifestyle that's improving in terms of MS. Maybe more people take vitamin D supplements. Smoking rates have declined, though I don't believe that's the case for women, which is the majority of people with multiple sclerosis. Maybe certain viral infections are becoming rare. Or conversely, because lifestyle is worse, and there does seem to be a slight association with vascular risk factors such as diabetes, hypertension, and obesity, and risk of getting multiple sclerosis, maybe people who had a lower genetic predisposition to MS who wouldn't have developed the disease in the past because our lifestyle is worse, because we eat more processed food, the disease would be unmasked, though could tend to be milder 
on average. Of course, I'm just speculating here. And of course, the last factor is disease modifying therapy. And I can tell you, even since I started practicing, I graduated from medical school in 2009, I can tell you there's an obvious difference, especially in young people with aggressive relapsing MS. We used to admit people to the hospital all the time for plasmapheresis, for severe myelopathic relapses. We're really cutting down on that a lot, so the drugs are effective, not for everyone, but certainly for many people. However, it's clear from the data I showed you that this trend that MS is getting milder started long before that, so I don't think it's just the medications. I think other factors are at play as well. And I'd be interested to know, why do you think MS is becoming milder? Are there other hypotheses I had not considered? I know this video may not feel like good news to someone with MS who does have significant disability. Unfortunately, MS remains a serious and potentially disabling disease, but perhaps this gives some hope to a younger person with low disability who's newly diagnosed. I do think the trend is very good. I strongly believe the claim I made in this video, and I do witness it myself, MS on the average is becoming milder over time, and perhaps you and I will live to see the day when it's much, much milder on average than it is now, or even curable. It is possible. I'd be interested to know if you have ideas for other videos as well.